Good to go. All right, very good. That being said, we'll go live. All right, we'll call the meeting of the uh, December 13th, uh, 2021 uh, meeting of the Dayton Town Council to order. Uh, good evening and uh, welcome to our final Town Council meeting uh, for the year, hard to believe. Um, as you can tell, I'm not Mayor Jackson. I'll be reasonably approximating that role as Vice Mayor, um, as Mr. Jackson is uh, not feeling well tonight. Uh, so we send his, uh, our regards for him to uh, make a quick recuperation. Uh, so I'll be filling in. And as uh, Ms. Lawrence mentioned, I will try to uh, hold to his goal of uh, 90 minutes or less or your money back. So very good. <laughs> we'll keep things moving along tonight. Uh, we will again be conducting it both in person and via Zoom. Uh, so for those uh, attending, the, uh, we will be uh, hearing public comment only from those in attendance in person who have signed up to speak uh, with speakers limited to five minutes each. Uh, please note that the public comment portion of the meeting has been moved up in the uh, agenda order. Uh, this will allow the public the opportunity to speak uh, and not to have to stay for the remainder of the meeting if they so desire. Um, so that being said, uh, Ms. Hall, if I can have a roll call before we go to the invocation and pledge. Present. Ms. Hoover? Here. Mr. Seward? Here. Ms. Estes? Here. Mr. Wall? Here. And Vice Mayor Dyback? Present. All right. Very good. Uh, for those of you so inclined, if you'll please stand and uh, join me for an invocation followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I would just note that. Thank you very much. During this majestic time of the year, let us give thanks and endeavor to be gracious and generous towards those of our neighbors, visitors, and family alike. Please allow us the true spirit of the season to guide us to conduct our uh, business matters uh, professionally and, uh, and with the community in mind, uh, remembering those who may be experiencing difficult times, be they physical, emotional, socioeconomic, or otherwise. To those, let us provide them comfort, solace, and renewed optimism in this season. May we th be thankful for the opportunity to live in this remarkable small town, and may, us, uh, may we equally be thankful and appreciative for the opportunity to serve our neighbors. May everyone experience a very Merry Christmas and a very joyous New Year. Amen. Amen. I, pledge I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. For the record, you might just state that there's people on Zoom joining us and ask. I would ask all council members to remember to talk into your microphone. Yes. One person to the next, if there are people. Absolutely. And welcome to those joining us via live stream here uh, to the Dayton Town Council meeting. Uh, we'll move right along to the next order of business, uh, which is the approval of the minutes from the regular town council meeting from November 8th and the uh, joint public hearing with the Rockingham County Board, uh, County Board of Supervisors from December 8th. Uh, look for a motion uh, uh, to approve both of those minutes, unless there's any amendments. I mean, moved by Ms. Mathias, sure. se second by Mr. Walls. Roll call vote. All right, Ms. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Stewart. Aye. Ms. Mathias. Aye. Mr. Walls. Aye. Ms. Estes. Aye. Mr. Seward. Aye. Vice Mayor Dyer. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, action item for tonight is the ratification of a resolution approving a boundary line adjustment with Rockingham County. Uh, this item was uh, heard in public hearing at the December 8, 2021 meeting. Uh, Ms. Lawrence, any comments? No, but it was a joint public, a joint public hearing with the county. Um, we, the county did ask for our approval before they voted, um, but um, we would like to go ahead and ratify that and have it in our minutes as well. Very good. Uh, seeing that, uh, if I'm uh, seeking a motion to ratify the resolution before us. I move. Uh, moved by Mr. Rawls. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Seward. Roll call vote, please, Ms. Hall. All right, Ms. Hoover. Aye. Mr. Seward. Aye. Ms. Mathias. Aye. Mr. Rawls. Aye. Mr. Seward. Aye. Ms. Estes. Aye. Vice Mayor Dyback. Aye. All right, motion carries. Very good. And now we'll get to our part of the meeting, a, a new section here, moving up the public comment here. And we will give uh, Ms. Deb Crank the opportunity to present. Uh, Ms. Crank, you're the only one who is signed up, but have at it. Welcome. Oh, and if you could, yes. Speak in here. You can use the microphone. 
Our Zoom viewers. My name is Deb Crank and I reside at 363 College Street, Dayton. I want to thank each of you and please pass this along to your teams for the street cleaning prior to our small town celebration. That was a huge success. It was nice to see the streets all nice and clean. Please keep visiting with our merchants. They really appreciate it. Additionally, the parade was a huge success and the merchant group will work to provide additional support next year for candy because of the counseling of other communities. I think we were bombarded. I was not at it, but my husband and my sister both said it was quite big and they were sharing candy amongst the kids down their way. It hasn't been talked about yet, but please support the additional officer that's gonna be talked about tonight or at any time. Um, we could always use at least one more officer in our town just to keep the level of non-criminal activity that we currently have. And then lastly, please consider informing residents when you're gonna survey their property prior to surveying. Um, no one likes to see those orange ribbons on both corners of our property and on their fence and a twig with a ribbon. And unfortunately it was the day before Veterans Day. And so Angela did get back with me quickly that evening and then we spoke on Friday. But when I saw it, I thought it was a joke with the kid with the twig because I hadn't noticed the other corners of my property being <laughs> surveyed. And when I got home, Rusty was in the yard. Not so sure if he didn't think I was selling the house from out from under him. <laughs> and so it wasn't until Angela was able to get back in the office and let us know that it was actually the town survey. And so when you're at ground zero and your neighbors aren't, and then it's King Street, but then the corner wasn't, and you really didn't understand. And since then, Angela looks at Spain and Justin. But if if you could do like the city of Harrisonburg and knock on the door. Um, and if I'm not there or the resident's not there, just throw a door hanger that says we're surveying for public, you know, for the public interest, because we understand that you got a survey, but it's not fun when you come home and see orange ribbons. And actually I took the one off the fence because I thought that was very inappropriate to be putting on my fence. And the other one was on a twig. So I kind of thought it was a joke until we saw the other one. So that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think she had, I think she still had a couple minutes left. No. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Craig. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, that Ms. Craig was the only one listed to speak. Was there anyone else though who wanted to join? Uh, all right. Seeing no takers, we'll move right along into staff reports. Ms. Lawrence for the town manager report. Sure. My report starts on page 18 of the packet. Um, we did receive the full bid package for the water plant on Friday. Jennifer and I will meet with the engineer on Wednesday morning so that he can answer our questions on the very technical, technical um, plans and specs. They have BDH simultaneously and BDH will be reviewing them. Um, we've done a few other um, things with BDH, but for the most part, it's still moving right along. And the attorney did get me today um, that uh, form for the or uh, the procedures for the Ag Forestal District, and I just need to have a conversation with the Roars about some other issues, but that's to say everything's moving along the way that it should. Um, that I have spoken to both the Infrastructure Committee and their committee and members of the Finance Committee about the financing through BDH and the timing of the project and, and all of that, and there's no action to be taken this month, but just an informational thing. If there's any action to be taken, we, we still expect bids to go out very soon. And for them to be due mid-January, they'll be advertised in the paper um, and on other websites and things. We do have contractors who are interested in that project and are waiting <laughs> for the package. Um, so uh, we have until February to, to talk a little bit more about the BDH finance package. Um, but I'll keep you updated on that as we move forward. Um, I too want to thank everybody who participated in the parade. There were numerous council members who wrote on our first time float, at least first time in a long time that we did a float and staff um, spearheaded that and, and designed it and built it. So I appreciate everybody working together. I know I say this almost every meeting, but to have a staff that works together, not one person said, that's not my job. <laughs> um, Susan, our treasurer, was out decorating the love sign with Krista, our community development person, our public works, our water department, the police, everybody worked together so well to try to get everything 
um, decorated. If you haven't been down yet, and those that are watching into um, Dove Park, the lights are beautiful. Um, have high wind days, sometimes they're laying down. <laughs> but we did get them put back up a couple times now. Um, but we also have a Santa's workshop that Maggie spearheaded that um, after the parade, Santa was very generous with his time and stayed until every last kid got to talk to Santa and the Santa's workshop. But um, I mean, if people haven't been out, I encourage them to go down. It's a great special photo op opportunity. Um, um, I'll talk about the wayfinding signs and the seal when I get to my items for consideration. But we do have um, the the task force has been working on a wayfinding sign for many months, and and hopefully we have a final design for our signs, a final concept design. Um, anyway, um, I do have numerous items for discussion and consideration. I will just mention I did talk to Miss Crank on Veterans Day. Um, or email back with her, sorry. Um, that survey, just so council knows, we've been working with that surveyor for months and did not get a heads up that he was coming out. Um, there were two flags on College Street, or um, I only saw two, but um, I think maybe you had taken there, yours down. There, yeah. There were, Mark Martin had one in front, middle of his yard. The, I call it the Lambert House, had two, and then King Street had one. So that the surveyor needed some pins that he could find in order to know where how to start the survey. So he took some in front of the dentist office and some in front of the cranks and other places and then surveyed King Street. Uh, Mr. Lowe was, the adjacent property owners were notified that they were surveying King Street. We just didn't know they were gonna put survey flags up and leave them up on other properties on college. So um, if, we, if we know about that ahead, we certainly would um, would and we'll ask the contractor next time and, to give us a they are still there, but I'm assuming they're still working. On your street or on King Street? On my property, yes. That's the whole okay. Mm. I just assumed they were still surveying. Um, I did get a call from the surveyor. He's still doing some deed research. I thought that they were down, so I will double check and make sure that we can take those down. We want the ones on King Street, obviously, to stay up until the projects, uh, until mm -hmm. he's completely done with his research. But those were just to mark the end point so that he could find the right distance. Um, on page 19, there's numerous items for discussion or consideration. So I'll just start at the top. Um, the town code, as you know, we've been working with Munico for quite some time and they have completed the recodification project. Um, they did send us an ordinance that needs to be approved to just adopt the recodified code. Um, they have moved some things around. They've clarified some things where, where we were in conflict with state Code they clarified they did not make substantive changes. So, and in fact, we had talked to the attorney. There's a couple things we've been making notes of a couple things we need to bring back to you that probably need to be revised in the ordinance, but we didn't want to muddy the water. So, what they've done is reorganized, recodified, brought it up to speed. We did not bring that ordinance to you tonight because you didn't have time. We just got the electronic copy like Friday. So, it's a big file. I don't know how many people want to read 397 pages of the code. We will send it out to you. Yeah, electronically. You know, list of what they changed. Uh, well, most of what they changed were just uh, there's there would be a huge list, and that's the other reason we didn't send it out. Krista, do you want to address whether the only changes I'm sorry. that were made were just changes to bring it in line with state code and bring things up to date. So there were no substantial changes to any laws, codes, ordinances, anything at all. And I've reviewed those. In other words, there's a thousand changes, but most of them are kind of technical reorganizational phrasing type changes. And it's not an overhaul of policy decisions that would be easy to provide in the list. There were lots of footnotes of them just asking, making sure some of them were just cleaning up some language. And a lot of it was moving things around to where it made more sense. Um, or, um, but we, we can't post it, the searchable online electronic copy on our website until after you guys approve the ordinance, but we can send you a drop file and Dropbox file or something that they could get into, or we could furnish it to you on a flash drive or something if you prefer that. Um, we can't print the whole thing. We do have printed copies here if you want to check a, a printed copy out and take it. Um, um, so, 
Um, but I just I wanted to give you a month's head notice that um, mm -hmm. there will be an ordinance to approve and we'll send that out ahead of time to um, just let Krista know if you need a written copy, a flash drive or a Dropbox and Dropbox, if you haven't ever used it, it it'll come to you with a link. You don't have to have Dropbox yourself and mm -hmm. still let you open it and, and yeah. all of that stuff. So great. Um, and then parking hours and parking, um, as you know, for some time, about a year and a half ago, the council approved um, posting signs about who can park in the park and all that stuff. Then we delayed um, posting those signs because the Mill Street project, we wanted to make the parking lots available for the dentist office and others whose parking was impacted. Um, since then, we have heard from some people that they wanted us to reconsider um, a variety of different topics, the hours of the park, as well as um, who can park in the parking lot. So the committee did meet last, the, the joint committee meeting of the police and the parks, recreation and beautification met last week. They asked if um, the committee wanted to meet with the residents of Dove Park. So we scheduled that for tonight at five o'clock. Um, and um, and I'll let Robert, there's no action required on the council tonight. This is for information on there will be action asked next month or whenever we can work out a good solution for that. Um, so I'll let Robert report on the rest of that tonight and his report. Um, and item for consideration that we would like action on tonight is that um, it's on the additional police officer the town was notified that we did not receive the cops hiring grant, which was what the budget was contingent on for the cops for adding that six officer. We received notice that we wouldn't get that. On your desk, you have a staff report. Um, and I'll just run through it since you didn't have time. <clears throat> it's basically the same information that you've received in the past, but Police chief is respectfully requesting that you consider the hiring of a sixth officer without the grant. If the council so chooses to do that, um, we'd like to do that um, tonight and get action to approve it, knowing that you will have to come back and amend or um, adjust the budget in the coming months. But um, and the reason would be that um, we have advertised for quite some time. Um, we have interviewed candidates. It's very likely that we may at this point, given the competitive nature and the lack of um, viable candidates that we will need to put somebody through academy in order to fill that position. And that academy starts January 3rd. So there is some urgency um, in that we, um, the next academy doesn't start until July. So um, it would be a long wait. And just so that you know, academy is a 20 week program. And then there's about three months of field training where they're in a car with their field training officer or officers and there's a whole list of requirements. So it takes some time to get them to where they can be a certified officer on the street by themselves. So um, no officers without having to go there that are interested in the job. Can you speak in the mic? I said there yeah, are any officers other than sending somebody to an academy. Nobody's been, been interested in it. No, so uh, we oh, have... yeah. can we get Chief, would you mind a microphone there for those who <laughs> participate? Not that your booming voice needs that, but uh, thank you. Um, no, we have had interest. The problem is, is that right now with the current environment, um, just to give you an example, we had an officer that was interested to come. Uh, he was coming from a really busy area. So I suggest he come do a ride along. So he did two days of ride alongs and he said he was still interested in the position. Um, and we interviewed him. Yeah. And he went back to his uh, sheriff at the time and the sheriff gave him what he wanted to keep uh, him. Mm. So the yeah. problem is a lot of agencies are giving people what they want to keep them yeah because it's easier to keep what you have than it is to bring on new people because you know it's harder and harder to find out so i talked to the chief in stanton city today they normally have about 40 to 50 applicants for each process they got eight yeah that's bad so it's uh it's not for a lack of trying it's uh we're all pulling from the same pool of candidates yeah. and those coming from other areas are being given what they want um, to keep them. So, so the, the determination of who to hire and whether they have to go through academy or not would be the police chiefs if you approve the budget and item and adding the sixth officer. Um, 
I'm just letting you know why we asked for it so quickly without giving you an, a whole lot of warning. Um, we did have, like I said, the police committee did meet and we did talk about this and then we needed to go back and do some more research. So um, just going down the bullets um, to date, we've spent- I do have a question oh, uh -huh. yes, on it. And if this isn't the right place, just say you can, we can talk later or whatever it is. If we send them to the academy, is there something that will keep them here for a certain period of time yeah, or? I can address that. Yeah, so every yeah. local, most localities, if they put somebody through the, and I have not talked to the attorney, have a three, a three, year, <laughs> a, a three year contract that's prorated. So if they're only here for a year, then we would prorate because we do have to pay them salary while they're in academy. We have to furnish them with equipment. Um, so you, you construct a contract, most are three years. Um, the last look at it, I was at, we changed it to three years after you complete your field training. So it's really almost a four year contract. Can we put a stipulation in there that if they don't stay, they have to pay back the fee for that's, the academy? That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, what, the yeah. that's oh, what the okay. contract yeah. says, it's yeah. a pro rate. So yeah. if he's been out in the field and done a year's worth of work and he doesn't have to pay everything back, he has to pay two thirds of it back. Good. Um, mm -hmm. um, and you okay. in the contract you list what the salary is, what the equipment costs are, and stuff before he signs. And, you it. Interview um, the and, all, so. and I, yeah. I trust It'll that the come up the right way. Yeah, and uh, trust me, I don't. Uh, I'm pretty hard on trying to find people. Um, any little thing that I don't find that would be appropriate for a police officer, especially for the town, um, that, that it wouldn't be hired. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can trust that I would do the right thing and make sure I get the I'm right person for a job. The only reason I ask the question like is with the environment so. now, mm -hmm. everybody's looking for people. You know. Yep. Now, very well could be if somebody got certified and decided to go to Harrisonburg because they're paying a six thousand dollars sign-on bonus yeah. that they could afford to pay us out of the contract, and then we'd be stuck. But we also have a better environment. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, so yes, the contract is part of that, and and yes. It's also written in there that whether it's by their choice or if we terminate them for well, some reason. I'm person. Thank you. I was distressed yeah. that you had to go for a grant when Bradford and I were on the meeting with the governor mm -hmm. for the funds that we got. The first thing he said that the money's actually for is our first responders. So to me, anything that you had on the list, dude, you should have had. Seriously. I appreciate you trying to get the grant because it would have saved us money, but. We have part-timers here that aren't from this area and they're not, they're not like the other officers and they don't act the same way. They're a little abrupt. I've had issues with them when my mom was alive. I've talked to you about it. I you'll always have my vote for a cop if you get rid of them. I appreciate that, Ms. Estes and Chief Trout. Um, Ms. Lawrence, any Yeah, so, there? um, yeah, um, some of those funds are, are one-time only funds and this would be a commitment to long-term purchasing mm -hmm. equipment vehicles that kind of stuff so i just want to make sure you're aware um that there is an expense as you know to a permanent full-time officer today and i was asked for information to date we've spent approximately twenty two thousand dollars on part-time and overtime budget for the pd we're almost a half a year halfway through the fiscal year mm -hmm. so at this rate, we would spend about 40, 45000 by year end. And some of that is the DMV grant and some is covering shifts for people who have been out sick or because we were short staff. So um, the complete cost of a full-time officer, including salary benefits and equipment, totals about $75,000, um, depending on the starting salary and stuff. And that doesn't include the additional vehicle that we're hoping will be half paid through the grant that we applied for. Um, so there is, it is more expensive to have a full-time officer. However, as I said on another bullet point that um, the dedicated full-time officer would have more commitment to the community, would have an opportunity oh, to get to know the businesses and residents better to I mean, be more yeah. Yeah. If, if, if more we could just let Ms. if we can let Ms. Lawrence finish real quick and then we'll take discussion. Um, yeah. Um, six officers would allow two teams basically to work together, two people on two teams with the lieutenant overlapping where when he can so that he is supervising both shifts and not just one, but he would also be the first one to fill in for people if they're sick or if they need to take PTO or if they're at training. So that the chief does understand, we have talked and talked and talked and talked about the fact that he would have to be much more flexible and adaptable on the scheduling to limit overtime um, and to have people come in on shifts 
that they normally wouldn't work to cover for somebody else. And everybody would have to be more flexible because obviously if we're paying this kind of money, uh, we can't afford the kind of overtime mm -hmm. and part-time that have been budgeted in the past when we didn't have a six officer. So he does fully understand that. Um, we are over budget already in the overtime and part-time, but that's because we're under budget in the full-time salary because we've had two people have to leave uh, under no fault of our own. Um, so the staff recommendation, the police chief respectfully requests approval of the six police officer. My recommendation, I support the additional officer position if the 24 seven coverage that council has said was a priority in the past and community relationships and commitment of the officers is a council priority. And if council deems that additional expense prudent, I just, my job is to just make sure you understand the fiscal impact. Um, and getting back to, I was gonna get back to one of the points in the assessments made, but I forgot what it is now. But anyway, so um, if you so choose, we would need a motion to approve the addition of a six officer, that would be a one or a two, depending on certification status, uh, with the understanding that the budget would need to be adjusted or amended for such and coming months. Before we uh, entertain that discussion or motion, um, Ms. Hoover is chair of police uh, committee. Did you want to offer any uh, insight on your considerations before we take questions? No, I think uh, Ms. Lawrence covered the majority of what uh, was discussed during our meeting this past week. Um, I, I did ask for a recommendation from staff just so that we could have a full picture of what it was that we were agreeing to. Um, I think, you know, based on talks with the chief, based on the needs of our community, it seems like this is, this is something that our community feels is important um, to have that 24-7 coverage and, and getting by with the part-time officers just is not, um, is not good for our community. So um, I think, yeah, I think the, the staff recommendation is, is in line with what, what needs to happen. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ms. Hoover. And uh, any questions for Chief Trout or Ms. Lawrence? Yeah, I have a question. Like, so I can go to the police academy and come out as a brand new person and make 75K. No, no, no. So we, that, that includes so like, all the right, equipment. Get, like, he's going to get a lower salary, right? No. He's like so, brand no. new. So no, the, the whole it wouldn't be that is, is expensive. No, the whole seventy-five thousand that includes the salary, uh, the VRS, health insurance, um, equipment. equipment. Yeah, the equipment's a one-time purchase, okay. yeah. so you could deduct a little bit from that. But that includes everything an employee gets. VRS, yeah, I was just, yeah. Uh, I was like, I'm yeah. like the police academy, dude. PTO, all that kind of stuff. Right. Hey. Yeah, no, that's not that's no. your new job. No, we don't make that much. That's crazy. <laughs> at, at the FICA yeah. and, uh, and tax. Yeah, I just wanted to make yeah. sure. Yeah. Social security, all that kind of all stuff. That, yeah. I was like, you think if he's from, from just fresh out the academy, he'd yeah. be a little cheaper. So it's it's uh, the total payroll expense. It's or, not the, yeah, or, or equipment. and Yes. Salary and benefits. Yeah. So what's he get as a salary? It you depends know. on certification level. If it's a new person. I mean, I'm just saying, he's brand new spanking out the academy. What are y'all offering? Uh, we'd have to look into... It'd be 40K. somewhere between 40 and um, wow. until he gets to academy and then 45 or something like okay. that. That's that's that. around 25. Right? <laughs> I'm like, it's, yeah. Yeah. I need to lose weight and go, go to the police academy. Very good. Any other, any other questions for Chief Trader, Ms. Lawrence, before Thanks, or otherwise I'll entertain a motion? Uh, motion to approve the addition of a six officer, uh, depending so on classification, certification status, understanding that the budget will need to be adjusted or amended uh, so at the January meeting. So move. so move, Ms. Estes, I have a second. Second, Mr. Walls. Roll call, please, Ms. Saul. Ms. Estes. Uh, yes. Mr. Taylor. Aye. Mr. Walls. Aye. Ms. Hoover. Aye. Ms. Mathias. Aye. Vice Mayor Belzac. Aye. All right, unanimous. Motion carries. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Lawrence. So um, moving right along. Or number four on my items for discussion or consideration is a special use permit signage at the museum. As you know, for a year or longer, we've been working on the wayfinding program, um, encouraging. Uh, and one of those is we, we were informed by VDOT and the consultants when they did their initial study that there were some signs that weren't in compliance. Uh, we have allowed um, Silver Lake Historic District and Rocktown History to stay on that intersection, they were permitted through us and permitted through VDOT um, for the big signs that they have there, but it's in, VDOT informed us that they can't keep their big signs there if they wanna be on the wayfinding signage program. Of course, they'll get more signage all the way through to their um, 
designation if they're on the wayfinding sign. So they would like, well, Silver Lake this Historic District and Rocktown History um, have an interest in moving their signs, plus Rocktown History has rebranded and they need a new sign anyway. So before doing their sign, we talk to them um, and they talk to us and they would like to move us, have a sign right there by their parking lot at the entrance of the museum that's bigger than what, right now they just have a temporary sign. But um, the only sign they have right now because it's a residential area is a pretty small sign up close to the building and you don't even know you're at the museum or the welcome center or visitor <laughs> center. Um, so anyway, um, we would like them to move their sign. They'd like to move their sign, but in order to do so, because they're in a residential district, a sign the size that um, they need is not permitted in a residential district unless there's a special use permit. So we would like action tonight to be that the council refer to planning commission that um, special use permit. And also because we would like to incentivize this and clean up that corridor and get it, we would like um, the council to include in that motion that they would waive the special use permit fee and consider that as a donation to the Rocktown History. That's nice. Um, so that they don't have to pay for that fee. Uh, we mm -hmm. still will have to advertise, so there will be some expense, and that's why we charge a fee for that particular permit because it has to go through public hearing. Um, but we'd like to not charge them for that. And before I, I uh, offer any discussion, I do want to just make on this matter just to do a personal disclosure here. Uh, as I do sit on the board of trustees for Rocktown History, I will refrain and abstain from uh, any discussion or a vote, even though there's no financial interest here, just to avoid any uh, conflict of interest. But I will certainly entertain any motions or questions that uh, council or uh, council has of staff. I think it's a great idea. All right. I think it's nice to waive the fee. Great. All right. Well, well, then we would need a motion to refer yeah. that. I would like to make a motion to refer this to what the planning commission you said. Refer to planning commission for consideration and to waive the. Fee as a donation to Rockdown History. Very good. To All right. The museum. Second. Second Very by Mr. Good. Okay, amazed by Ms. Estes. Second by Mr. <laughs> Seward. Uh, I understand we do not need a roll call here. It'll be just uh, all those in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. And I'll abstain. No, all right. The next issue the I do not need council mm -hmm. action on, but I wanted to make you aware that um, currently there are no street lights in the Dayton West subdivision. Our <laughs> Our town code requires um, street lights in the subdivision, but the plat was approved by the town way back in 2005 or so. Yeah. <laughs> and the plat did not have street lights on the plat that was signed off and approved. However, on the other side, the, the developer also signs off that they'll follow all the ordinances. Uh, unfortunately, all the uh, utilities have been put in, the sidewalks are in, the streets are in. There's no good way to go back and retrofit any type of regular street light. We have looked at every option uh, because of VDOT regulations, the fact that they don't own easements, the lots are smaller than they typically are as R2 with special conditions. So you'd have technically, if you followed all the regulations, um, a street light six feet from somebody's front door, <laughs> which is not a good solution. So the best solution that we came up with um, would be, well, the two options. One is not to go ahead and bring back to council that you would waive them having street lights in or to put a limited number of um, street lights there, but they would be solar lights. And the catch is if they're solar lights, um, so the regular street lights right now, we pay for the street, we pay Dominion or Shenandoah Valley Electric Co-op every month for a utility bill for every street light in town and in exchange, they come in and replace the bulbs and do whatever they do um, when we report an outage or whatever. In this situation, because it would be a solar light, it would be upon the town to maintain those lights, which basically is spraying down the solar panel about once a month. And then when the batteries or lights, or fixtures, anything go wrong, the town would need to replace that. My understanding, and Robert can probably give me the technical information that everything lasts at least three to five years, probably longer. Um, so um, because we've never done it before and because we're, we would be agreeing if they put them in to maintain something long-term, I wanted to get a feel from council. I don't need action, but I wanna 
see if there's any reservations on that. And I'll recuse myself since I'm actually helping the developer with the lighting design. So, mm -hmm. has has there been any comment from the residents that they would like to see street lights in that neighborhood? So that's why that's what drew our attention to it. Somebody okay. did contact me, one of the residents up there. It's very dark in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. It's pretty yeah. dark even in the other new neighborhoods with street lights, but. Um, um it gets really dark especially up on the hill where there's no other development around at all um so somebody did bring it to me that's when i looked out and then sent an email to the developer saying when are you gonna put street lights in <laughs> it's the first time anybody had approached him so yes and then when we were out there with a the developer one day just kind of looking at what some of the alternatives would be a resident walked out and asked what we were doing because we we're standing right in front of our yard just standing at our yard um and we mentioned it and she said yes yeah, she she'd really like to have a street light but then when i said what if your homeowners association fee went up for you to pay for the maintenance you know because that was the other option is turn this over to the homeowners association right now there is not an active homeowners association mm -hmm. but once they build up enough houses they have to turn it over um that doesn't seem to be a viable option um either i think it would probably be better so we have not pulled all of them and we decided at the committee that um that might open up a whole nother box of worms because <laughs> some people might want them and some not. The solar lights are not going to be as bright as a street light, so it shouldn't interfere with anybody's indoor light shining in their bedroom window or whatever. But it would, we would have one right near the entrance sign at the intersection where you turn on. We would have one. There's some common area on the right hand side that doesn't have enough room for a house. So closer up to where the house will start, there would be one, and then one at the um, circle up at the top of the cul-de-sac um, in the middle of that. There's a room to put those three lights, and that's really what we're talking about. Our ordinance, as you know, as I reported last month, does not say how many lights, what the brightness is, how far apart it just so one set and street lights are required. So we'll be bringing that back to you, as you know, also in February. So just, is there a way to try it out there <coughs> and then spread it throughout the rest of the town to switch over? I, I love solar. I'm like we were talking on the phone tonight too we we're going to come to you and ask if you'd have this company go and do a presentation on solar power for the public to hear to try to get some people to convert in the town as well yeah give but me, it, send me that information yeah, yeah. He has it. or who has it robert oh, i can yeah uh, robert's got it okay yeah. yeah that would be good uh timely too i know uh well i know we've last meeting we already referred uh discussion and consideration to the planning commission at the next uh, meeting so uh i'll definitely and Ms. Hall and I will definitely be looking into that a little bit further in January. So, um, there's a problem as with everything else, with supply chain issues. So I probably this may or may not be installed anytime soon. But just wanted to hear if there are any red flags I need to be aware of since we would be taking on a new maintenance. Then we don't really have a truck to get up there, but I'm assured it's only a 12 foot pole and we can get a ladder or something. Adam can shimmy up there, right? <laughs> Adam, yeah. Adam can shimmy up. Yeah, all, all of our guys in public works love heights. They all love heights. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 A couple of them are almost as tall as well. Yeah, there you go. So, well, you got candy in that bag. Very good. Any questions or concerns for yeah. Miss Lawrence? Or all right, okay. we'll continue to proceed. And then finally, um, I I just wanted to also run by it's not on this list. We have several items that are surplus items that we'd like to get rid of. None of them are still being claimed um, on the um, inventory for the auditor in terms of assets, but um, there's several, there's probably six or eight metal desks. Um, they were in the police officer's main area. They took what they needed downstairs when they moved, but there's four up there. There's a couple more up there. I'd like to put them out for either Pre, pre cycle or something, put them out, let people come pick them up. They're old metal desks. I don't think we're going to use here anymore. There's some artwork that um, nobody wants. It's been sitting back in the back room. We had offered to give that to Sadie Rose next time they have a yard sale if they want to sell that. Um, it's a nonprofit here in town. Um, and just want to make sure you guys don't. Oh, and then there's um, probably about 20 of these chairs with fabric that's ripped that got dry rot and they're ripped when we stack mm. them up during COVID. A lot of them just completely shredded. They're in another room. We haven't thrown them out. I'd like to go ahead and throw them out as well. I just want to make sure you guys are good with that. Everyone None census? of that equipment's still on the audit list, right? The depreciation list. Okay. All right. We got head nods. 
Okay. Yes. I just want it noted in the minutes that I absolutely had that. And then um, on page 20 are the updates on the capital projects. Um, Oh, let me. Ms. Ms. Yeah, I was gonna say, Ms. Lawrence, if we want to bring, there's one nine for consideration yeah, from, yes. yeah. So or I was um, gonna say from community development too. So also on your desk, yeah, I was gonna bring up the sign programming community development, but I'll bring it up now since I'm doing all the reports. Um, on your desk is also the approved design concept for the sign, and believe me, and Bradford's on the task force. Um, Krista sits in on the meetings. Um, Adam sits on, and then representatives from downtown business um dayton market cheryl um the museum fort harrison are all in the task force we have been through many iterations of signs and this mm -hmm. was the final design concept that incorporated a lot of different things so the green and and um off colors are to represent the valley it incorporated our logo with the buildings that we have in the logo um, and this was the base that the committee decided I'm really showing this to you because last month when I brought up the town seal, Bradford asked if we could incorporate the new signs in with the town seal. So you also have a sheet that has the town seal that was presented to you last month. And then the best attempt we could do to incorporate the valley kind of signage in there. The problem is um, with the black and white copy on the seal, which is the left bottom of your page, when Maggie did the, the black and white copy, you can see that the white and black of the buildings would interfere with the white and black of the, of the valley. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it didn't show clear. So she had to move the valley kind of thing up, which then make them around mountains. We all in the office still prefer the two on the right hand side that we would use um, black and white when we need to and color when we can afford to. <laughs> Um, so um, the recommendation, the chief very much wants to order his patch. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I told him I would bring it back. We didn't know that we were going to have the final design at okay. the last minute. Um, and we didn't know that they would, whether we would get it electronically by the time. Y'all yeah, need to make bumper so. stickers so I can put one on my car. Mm -hmm. well, we could do right. I would yeah. rock that. I would yeah. pay for that. Yeah. I love so, stickers. Yeah. The, the one on the right. The two yeah, on right. the right. All right. The color and the black and white. They're the same logo. One's a color. Yeah. One's yeah, yeah. Yes. we could use them interchangeably yeah i think it incorporates some elements from the signage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah i i don't like the super yeah. rounded yeah. Okay. yes no. i will concede it did uh, <laughs> it, it morphed into something i don't think i envisioned yeah yeah <laughs> so there you go I, I'll, I'll concede i'll accept that it was i i would Good just time. ask it is it possible just i don't know just maybe small no, just uh, if we kept the, the, the design on the right, just to incorporate, I kind of like the blue uh, yeah, right. oval, you know, or actually just incorporating the blue around the, uh, the you know, the, out, the outer ring, yeah, for blue the ten, yeah, and yeah. then yeah. just, yeah, would that maybe work? On both of the rings or just one of them? Oh, uh, I was just think. I mean, actually color in where it's white. Yeah. Basically, oh, if you oh, take, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the switch the color of the letter. Yeah, so, so the change the letter, right, take the letter. Take the, the outside of out, this There you go, pop it on there. So yeah. move the out, outer so, ring from so the letter. This, from this part to there. Yeah, but yeah. keep and keep it white inside. Does yeah. that yeah. make yeah. sense? Yeah. Like, that's that's nice. nice. All right. <laughs> do I hear Chief? Chief? All right, now I'm going to ask Krista, Susan. All right. Sounds like we have consensus. So we do actually need a motion. Oh, we got one for you. Are, are you ready to approve it or do you want to see it with the blue? I'll ask. No, I think. Visualize. Are we okay with that? Yeah. Whenever you're ready to approve, I would just suggest a motion All right. to that fact. Too. Motion to approve with the uh, amendment that we suggested with the blue ring? I move. Mr. Walls? Second. Second by Mr. Seward. I guess we could just do, do we need a roll call? No, okay, we'll just do, all right, all those in favor, but aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. See. Getting things done, all right. I, I really hope that's the last of my report. <laughs> yes, Miss Lawrence, did you, there was one other item that uh, Miss uh, Roche had added as an item for consideration. Do we wanna just wait till we get to economic development report? Oh, the fee thing? Yes. Yeah, let's, let's well, do that. Or, or you want to no, no, go ahead. You want to do it now? Let's knock it out. Um, no, we can do it when we get to her report. That's fine then. Hey, I have a All question. Right. I have a question. Hold on. So then we'll have that later. Wait a minute. 
Angela, did we ever get the poles, the light poles and the electric to the boards down at the Greenway? Remember Dale and I right. passed that to get the, uh, the the wall, the blocker walls. It's lit obviously up. not done for Christmas. We have had the electrician go down. There, okay, yeah, I didn't know if y'all got to put lights up or not. No, we didn't get to do Christmas lights this year, but we are still. Because we even gave you extra money for <laughs> like lights. <laughs> we didn't, that wasn't included. It didn't go in? <laughs> uh, there is money for the Greenway in the capital program this year. And All we're right. obviously not gonna spend it on other stuff. But when we, do you think the pole lights might go up? Well, the the um and i did talk to mr roar after you suggested that and he's fine with with um that um we also need to do the remainder of that black steel fence for security for oh, safety yeah, reasons yeah. so i'm waiting for on the bid for that okay um so that we know i just knew we were waiting after the mill street but i figured adam's not building the water plant so <laughs> you know okay so oh, i was I just wondering if it got done because that was like back at the beginning of the year it's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. All right. Any other questions for Ms. Lawrence? If not, I think we're the next few reports. Uh, I don't believe have any action items, but we're happy to hear them. So, Ms. Smith, Treasurer and Financial Report. Hi, uh, Vice Mayor and Council. You have the Treasurer's Staff Report and Financials for the period ending November 30th. Um, a couple of updates: the real estate tax uh, payments received as of Friday were $116,326 at 95% of what was budgeted to receive. And the vehicle license fees <clears throat> was at $39,074, and that's 83% received so far. So we're, we're pretty good with that. As a reminder to people who haven't done their vehicle fees, we now put DMV stops on yes. after a period of time if you don't get your vehicle license. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's pretty good. That, that uh, shakes things up quite a bit. It gets <laughs> people in here, so it's a good thing. Any questions for Ms. Smith? I'll just say thank you for that. I know it's a busy time of year. And uh, and again, thank you. Congratulations on a, a great audit report last month. And I know it's been a a uh, long time coming and well done, so. All right, very good. Uh, police, Chief Tra I think we've heard enough from the, no, <laughs> Chief. Uh, thank you, Council, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, again, I just wanna thank you all for the support. Really appreciate it. Um, I love this town and I wanna see it thrive, so. Um, so to my report, I just had a few highlights. Um, the two new officers, Rocap and Cachapalli, have been great. Um, they are both great assets to the department and community. Um, that was evident with the coffee with the cop. Um, we didn't have a great showing, but I feel like, you know, even just one community member coming to sit down with us for coffee is better than none. And at least we are getting together with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, we had eight people come out mm -hmm. uh, for coffee with the cop. Um, I also want to highlight last month. Uh, the Dayton Market was doing their appreciation day. They got together with me, wanted to include the police department. So we put together Touch a Truck, which was a huge event. We had tons of kids, uh, parents, um, and they even, with the weather, we had a, sort of had sprinkling and stuff. We still had people in the wind in the sprinkling, their kids in the cars and playing around with all the equipment. So it was a great event. Uh, and I'm sure we posted pictures on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Get better at Facebook, by the way. <laughs> um, you said it's a great model, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, I will highlight the um, Officer Claus campaign we were doing. Uh, it, it's getting out, it's advertising businesses. I keep moving it back and forth between downtown, the Dayton market, um, when, when everybody's open. So it's getting a lot of shares on the Facebook page. It's not taking off the way I wanted to with people taking pictures uh, with them, but at least it's bringing some uh, things to town for people to see it. Um, Aubrey Urbana, <coughs> uh, weather person for WHSC, she's commented on it um, and she keeps on sharing it all over the place. So it's pretty cool. And other than that, um, if you have any questions about the report, uh, let me know and I'll answer those. Good. Can I just add that that officer clause was one of Justin's great ideas, enthusiastically proposed. Yeah. Um, and not only was it his idea, he made it 
at home oh. and he painted it himself. I even asked his wife if she painted it. She painted it. <laughs> <laughs> he did the whole thing. I'm not very artistic. Wow. I came out pretty well. So yeah, it's it, cute. When he sent me the picture, I was sure she, she had done it. But no, he did it. So, um, Too shabby. And we are about to film a holiday campaign. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. Lieutenant Hooker was the Grinch, and we're going to do some, uh, you know, some campaigns for Don't Be the Grinch this holiday season. You know, another way to kind of get the town involved and bring some, you know, notice to the town of Dayton, you know, we're fun and we are, um, we're going to post this first video here pretty soon. And... We're not cranky. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most holiday spirit in the first video you'll see. Uh, why the Grinch chose to come to Dayton. So. So is that going to, that's on Facebook? We're going to put it on Facebook. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're hoping to put it on TikTok, which is why we do it, because we want Maggie, <laughs> Maggie, the young person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we lost yeah. everyone else yeah. here. Their age <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do that. Uh, TJ's off on the uh, 17th, and uh, we're going to get together on the 17th and do all the filming of each scene, and then we're going to post video on the Facebook page. Oh, nice. Play. So it's going to be wow. a lot of fun. Hopefully it's well received <laughs> and it's funny and people like it. Um, but that is coming. So it, it is, it is. And I can't wait. Bar. Debbie, better you put her Sarah so I can see yep. it. Yep. The Russians are barring TJ in the spring for a radar check. Okay, yep. All right. And also, nice. I will note too, um, that TJ is volunteering. He's off on Saturday. He's volunteering his time. He's going to be at the Dayton Market. Uh, they asked if he come up and do pictures with the Grinch. Oh, wow. Awesome. Very good. All so, right. Yeah, thank you. Kids, if you with the kids, if they'll let them. A lot of kids don't cry around. Like <laughs> yeah. Um, it is kind so of crazy. It's, be, it's a lot of fun. We're trying to do a lot more with the community and mm -hmm. businesses. And to, you know, it hasn't been great economically, and we're trying to boost. Well, I want to get any other qu any questions for chief trout keep it up sir dj's looking a little too grinch like though yeah, that's, that's, that's eerie <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> oh. it's great but it's it's a little too real my favorite picture though was the baby yoda ones oh, oh yeah. Wow. That was oh, yeah very good. Public Works, Miss Lawrence. I will just add that TJ sends Justin and I group text all weekend long with his new Grinch. <laughs> uh, oh boy. He's, he, he is, really the role. He's, he's <laughs> taking it a little too seriously these yeah. days. But, um, yeah, Public Works report is on page 24. Um, with Justin's Touch a Truck event, he corralled Adam into giving up his Saturday mm -hmm. morning as well. And we took um, the dump truck with a snow plow on it. Um, up there, um, and like I said, I'll say it again, our, our team works well together. Adam didn't hesitate to say, yeah, he'd come do this event that Justin was working with the businesses on. And unfortunately, um, they were just about done finishing paving in front of the Dayton market when it started, but they mm. finished up pretty quickly that day. Um, anyway, um, obviously they've gotten everything ready for winter and have the decorations up. Any there questions on that report? Mm. Roll right into water. Water report is on page 25. Same thing. Um, right. We are still working on Harrisonburg, not only on the line to Silver Lake, which I'll need to talk to the attorney and bring back to council an agreement um, on any what we're going to charge them to tap into our line at Silver Lake and, mm -hmm. and then an agreement with what they're going to charge us. We have agreed that we'll put a meter We'll have to install the line. We need to put a meter up by Walmart and just pay as we use it, not a guarantee like we have with Silver Lake. Um, but if there's ever an emergency and we need water, we can take it off their line up by Walmart. Um, and if there's a catastrophe and we're all out of water, then we're out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. At least you can't. I'm not. Council tells me otherwise. I do not recommend us guaranteeing yeah. two million gallons of water. No. Um, if no. they don't have it. No. If there's a That's catastrophe, Walmart in some way will have to shut down. So, yeah. Aside from any post apocalyptic questions, anyone else have any questions for <laughs> Lawrence here? Um, just so you know, um, <laughs> Lucas 
will be taking his class two licensing exam next month for a class three facility. We don't need class two, but it never hurts to mm -hmm. be better educated. Jennifer sure. has a class one. In the past, they had asked Adam to get a class two. So he's doing that in order to better himself and to mm -hmm. have better um, education. Jennifer is getting ready to take her pesticides exam. We no longer have somebody who can train the other people who need their pesticides. So she'll get the higher level and then everybody else will train under her and get theirs. But Conrad was that person for a long time and he's um, because he's not working, his certification is about to expire. So mm. Jennifer will get that higher level. Good. Any questions on public works or water? Seeing none, moving on to community development report from Ms. Hall. My report is on page 26. I don't have anything to add and the items for consideration, manager Lawrence already took care of those. So unless anyone has any questions, I don't have anything else. Very good. Ms. Hall, thank you very much. And you gave us a reprieve on the plan commission this month, but uh, I know we will be Quite busy, January 20th. Mark your calendars, folks. A nice long planning commission meeting. So <laughs> thank you. All right, very good. Uh, Ms. Lawrence for economic development report. Sure, the economic development report starts on page 27. I've gone over some of it already, and there's the others. I do want to say um, we did run out of candy. We ran out of candy about the time we hit College Street. <laughs> yeah, and I kept dad, people, it was right at my dad's. Mm -hmm. I kept telling people, other people have candy behind us. Well, nobody did because it was packed. Um, and it, mm -hmm. it was a combination of, there were a lot of out of time people that we've not seen here before. Yeah, so that's, that's great. And they know where Dayton is. Um, we hope that they'll come back next year, even if other people have their parades. Um, mm -hmm. um, the businesses were happy, even though they weren't open or didn't benefit business wise. They were happy to see that kind of traffic downtown. Mm -hmm. I did stop by and talk to them on Saturday. Um, Obviously, the attendance was much higher. We went through at least 150 cups for hot chocolate before we ran out of cups. Mm. Last year, I think we went through about 15. So, um, I mean, we were using plastic yeah. cups that aren't made for hot chocolate <laughs> out of the closet. Mm -hmm. because, um, so, and like I said, Santa was very kind to stay and kids were happy. There were just a ton of people there. We had one negative comment on Facebook about COVID protocol and having that many people, but otherwise I think everybody was just delighted mm -hmm. um, with that. We do have the holiday decorating contest that people can still apply up until today. Um, we have some entries. We have judging that will take place on the 16th, hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah, judges hopefully. are out, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll get that. I've already talked about the wayfinding project. Um, the item for consideration is, um, this is an example where we didn't pass something before the recodification. We have the recodification. We um, added the fees as an appendix in the code. So we'll have to go back and change the code after this. But anyway, it's we need to get the registration up for date days and Redbud. Um, we would like to start doing online registration, including online payment. And we don't have that capability right now. The only thing people can pay online right now is the water utility and it goes through a special program. In order to absorb that extra cost for us to do online and the fact that we haven't raised the cost, my report says the fees haven't been changed for at least 10 years, that's date and days. Redbud fees were adjusted in 2014. Um, but anyway, we'd like to add $10 per event registration fee. Leah's done a ton of research. We're actually, for the big events this size, we're still lower than a lot of people, uh, for, than most, um, and in line with other festivals. But um, $10 after more than 10 years, we think is fair for people to have the convenience to be able to submit their application and their payment online. So we would need council action with a motion on that if you want to change those fees and we can do that because it's for a festival mm -hmm. we can do it without advertising like we would with the budget process if it were if we were changing another fee so like only right. for date and days or both of the ten dollars ten dollars would be for both festivals okay what's so. the fee now for date and days once 165. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 265. 265 is if you get a double space. You save okay. a little bit of money by getting the double, but yeah. And date and days, I want to say, is 75. I read, but I mean, what, 75? Yeah, what's it now? You said yeah. it's 75. 65 now or 75. 75. What? 
76. Now. That's not bad. Yeah. They're still making a killing. Yeah, it's not, it's it's it it's fair and it's to cover costs. Back. Yeah. And I haven't been, any any questions? Then I'll look for a motion to uh, approve the vendor e uh, fee increase by ten dollars for both date and days and Red Bud Festival. All right. Uh, for, uh, motion by Ms. Estes, second by Mr. Walls. All right. Roll call vote. Ms. Hall. All right, Ms. Hoover. Aye. Ms. Estes. Aye. Mr. Seward. Aye. Ms. Mathias. Aye. Mr. Walls. Aye. Vice Mayor Dodge. Aye. Motion carries. All right, very good. Thank you very much, Ms. Lawrence. Any other items for update? Okay, well, then we're on to the town attorney report, Mr. Bowman. I'm pleased to report. I have nothing to report. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Motion to roll out. Excellent. All right. I, just, I, I talk about staff a lot, but Jordan is so easy to work with. He's so responsive, and he, um, he works with Chris and I. Very responsive, very intelligent. If he doesn't have any answer, he's something to that for us. And I just kudos and um, I don't normally get that sort of appreciation in a meeting. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no. Absolutely. I appreciate that. I really enjoy working with your staff. You've got a good group. Here. And thank you very much there, Mr. Bowman. Yeah, it's been great to have you as a regular fixture here and uh, looking forward to another prosperous year with you. Very good. Any questions from Mr. Bowen before we get a committee report? All right, you're off the hook easy. Why? <laughs> Very good. Uh, committee reports, uh, economic and community development. Uh, just to echo a lot of what uh, Ms. Lawrence had said and uh, Ms. Crank had uh, also mentioned. It's just, I'll just start to say it's a great time to be in Dayton. And uh, this, uh, this time of year is, uh, is certainly no different. This is kind of small town that we all, I think, uh, I think most people are just envious when you talk about small town Christmas. You know, talk about our Christmas parade, tree lighting, you know, coffee with the cop, Dayton market appreciation, just a great all around, you know, community <laughs> feel. And this is exactly why people love small towns in the holidays. We're just lucky to live here. So uh, great. To, uh, all those were great events. And again, good public private partnerships. And I think that's that's key. You know, we, we're a community that can work well together and really spotlight what's great about this area. Um, and so to that end, um, I know we had uh, we did have a productive meeting um, at the Thomas House for uh, the, those uh, seeking the Main Street group uh, slash merged group. We're talking about uh, I think really good ways to to in 2022 to collaborate. Uh, and I thank Ms. Crank for uh, you know for uh, coordinating uh, some of those efforts. And it was a I think a good meeting that uh, held and we've got some uh, great traction there. I think the, the summary is. Try, sort of a trial period next year to kind of work through that public private partnership and uh, find a framework where we can coordinate both uh, uh, merchants, retail, um, or uh, civic organizations in the town. So uh, exciting things ahead here. Uh, and in January, uh, we'll have a date here soon, but I'll be uh, having another meeting at the Dayton Tavern. So I'm glad to hop, hop around there. So thank you very much to Ms. Patel. Thank you very much for your participation too. She has been, she is a quiet unsung hero there and attending everything. And, uh, and she, you know, when, when she speaks up, you listen. So that's it. Uh, but I appreciate everyone's efforts there. And uh, uh, thank you very much. So that's it. Learn how to do Instagram next month. They're going to teach y'all how to promote your businesses on Instagram. Yeah, we're, we're having an Instagram to class. Y'all yeah. yeah. want to get some modeling out yep. to the Instagram world? Come, we'll hook you up. Jack about to educate everybody. Yep. There you go. Yeah, and I, I will say that too. That's another thing too. I just really want to give a, a lot of credit there to Maggie. She has been an asset here, and it's it's almost hard to believe this time last year we didn't have her. <laughs> so, uh, in just a short less than a year, she's really made a mark here has been really instrumental in, in uh, business outreach and development and uh, excited for the main street for all the events. So uh, thank you to her for that. And in fact, that's one thing I know she's working with the uh, small business development center too, to coordinate some training and coordinate with that merchants group. So can I add about the Instagram? We have a town Instagram page and I have been encouraging the chief to um, get a police Instagram page, which he wants to do because when you do the photos and stuff and then the videos, it's better there. Mm -hmm. um, the town Instagram, we actually have three town <laughs> Instagram pages because they were set up by different people. Um, and we don't have, not only do we not have the passwords, but when we try to recover the <laughs> passwords, the phones that were hooked up for the security issues, 
are no longer in effect and um we tried numerous things so we we have another instagram page it's not as heavily used and we want to make sure that we're going to be consistent in it before we encourage everybody to switch over to that but we will be we do post from time to time on instagram not as much as we do on facebook i think it's discover dayton va um, now um you should be able to change your settings on instagram but instagram and facebook are under make and that up and so they do both but this was set up years ago so and you can't even change yeah. no we no we tried and tried and we have all the old passwords and all the phones yeah. and what happened was you should be no, no he'll he'll have no yeah. problem because he ha doesn't have one at all <laughs> right Right. No, yeah, and Jack, Jack, <laughs> Jack understands the yeah. algorithms and but, how, like, he's his he said his yeah, business but, had reached like what twenty seven thousand people. So he really understands how to get his product and his business yeah, out right. into the world, other than just Dayton. So it'd be a good idea to show mm -hmm. up for that one because he has a lot of. I miss, yeah, I was just, yeah, and I know Maggie's going to be attending that too. Miss Lawrence, any other comments on that or? No, okay. We're, okay. we once we set it up on the things that are appropriate for Instagram, we'll post. And I've already told them sure. you just move the little slider over and it automatically post to Facebook. Fantastic. You, you have to post to Instagram first, but go to Facebook. But not everything goes both ways. Like we don't put town announcements and town meeting notices on face on Instagram because it's more of a uh, it's a different audience and a different absolutely um, medium. And that's where we would put pictures and promote businesses and stuff. We will work on that. Um, Maggie's working on that. She's very good at that kind of stuff, but it, she's had a few other things on her plate. Indeed. A little thing, busy there. A little busy. One there. thing we brought up at the meeting to make sure that the TV that got put into the farmer's market also has video of downtown. Oh, it's absolutely. That, that was actually part of the agreement. On that and try to add that to that because you yeah. can't advertise one and without the other when we're paying yeah, for it. That, so. was, that was part of the agreement. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So that'll be nice. Indeed. So the there challenge you go. with, so what they're talking about is we're putting a monitor up. Um, at the market and the main area right across from the toy store they have some space maggie will be working on them on taking slides and making them into uh powerpoint what we'll take powerpoint slides but make them into a video kind of moving around the challenge is not putting too much stuff on there that people would have to stand there for a half an hour to see every business so yeah uh, we'll be grouping things together and mm -hmm. putting a map up there and all of that but it will Just spur it really the market wants to spur they know that they're the chief destination that people come to dayton for on tourist stuff in terms of where people here they want to make sure that when people come to the market that they also go downtown mm -hmm. into the visitor center and the museum and stuff like that yep. so they're giving us an opportunity to to market the rest of the town and take advantage of the people that come into their place. Yeah. Um, and so Jack, well, we're it's a good the opportunity. We're paying for the TV. Market, so it's a little yeah. bit of both. It's a, so yeah. we're going to be, that'll be one of our meetings that it, we're going to work together. It's yep. not them and us. Yeah. And it's so, a symbiotic relationship. Because Jack, yep. up, I didn't realize that a lot of folks don't, do not know about the Dayton market yep. thing and then breakfast. I thought everybody knew about the yeah. Dayton market. And it's truly somebody and I, I ran into people that were waiting in line at Dayton Days for that Mennonite bakery. And somebody said, I just drove up from yeah. Buena Vista because you can't get this here. And I said, Oh, oh. Yeah, wait, well, <laughs> yeah, but you can, yes. So it was through Saturday any other day. And so yeah. you're right that not everybody knows, but um, in terms of, and I didn't mean to say they're the only destination, in terms of the people who come there as a destination, they want to make sure that they're including everybody i think they very much want to partner yeah, with that's with all the other businesses so that's um, the goal in 2022 indeed very good um yeah on that note just uh shop local shop dayton there you go during the holidays here one last uh weekend push but uh and then i'll just also note i know uh on the calendar next uh this saturday um is wreaths across america day and uh Fort Harrison will be hosting, uh, I think, from 1.30 to 3.30, an open house uh, and right after the wreath fling ceremony at the cemetery. So keep that on the uh, on the calendar. Um, unless there's any questions, I'll just roll right on. I, I guess Mr. Dijek's doing the finance report. So uh, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, nothing major to report other than we're planning a, a meeting uh, before the next um, council meeting to cover a, a good bit of ground there. So we'll... Uh, I know Ms. Smith been, and Ms. Lawrence have been warned. We'll uh, be a little longer conversation uh, talking about more treatment plant finance options and planning for, uh, hard to believe, but the uh, next year's budget, um, start prepping that schedule. So 
Any questions? All right, Mr. Seward, infrastructure. So I'll jump back in on the, we met on the 7th uh, over the water treatment plant drawings and such, which Ms. Lawrence covered, they came in um, on time this time. So we'll go out for, and that pretty much is all we had for infrastructure that day. So no action items. Very good. All right, Mr. Seward again for Parks and Rec. So Parks and Rec, uh, we met on the 7th. Um, and had some inquiries and things with the park hours, the parking. So we decided to uh, set a time. It was actually five o'clock this evening, as Ms. Lawrence pointed out. Uh, two of the residents showed up, uh, have some good ideas. So we will take it back to the Parks and Rec Committee and go from there. Otherwise, no actions for that. Before I say that, though, I will say one thing. The parade and this little Santa's workshop that Maggie did for the kids down there was unreal. There were so many comments and some people from out of town that that touch she did with that little Santa's workshop really put the icing on the cake. So just kudos to her for the, because that was kind of above and beyond what she mm -hmm. had to do. So if I could just add to that, not excluding anybody in the room, but last year when we added, went from one tree in the pavilion to the winter mm -hmm. wonderland trees and then mm -hmm. outside, everybody said, oh, now every year we need to add to it. Susan and Krista <laughs> last year, proposed a Santa's workshop, um, <laughs> Susan, apparently, Susan <laughs> proposed a Santa's workshop. Susan's always <laughs> done the decorating, but Maggie took it over with Susan's blessing and Susan's uh, expertise and, uh, and did that. So again, it's truly a team effort here, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Jim would be so happy. I, we had planned to take over the workshop before he passed away in COVID to do that for the town. And we put COVID just never for Jim. It's just Ruth, Jim's wife, and his boys and their families were at the parade, and they were sitting right <coughs> oh, at wow. the entrance of Dove Park, and um, and she stayed for the tree lighting and the candle lighting and everything. And she said she she let me know she would be there every year, making sure that we met. The <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, so um, I made sure that she saw that because it's kind of tucked away. Although I'll tell you, if you drive down Forty Two or Main Street and you look you over, it. you can see. The Cranks yep. house and our house from yep. far away. <laughs> and you can even at the right angle see Santa's workshop lights through the colored ones. So um, right. anyway. And the snow um, uh, juice arrived today. So the machine comes in, you make snow at some point floating around our house. <laughs> oh, all all right. Well, well, so, yeah. So, all right. Um, Mr. Yeah, so Mr. Sir, I'll correct all Sorry. three ladies did a wonderful job. Yeah. I, don't <laughs> want to anybody. I don't want them after this. Motion is amended. There you yeah. go. Yeah, okay. amended. Otherwise, uh, like I said, it'll go the hours and stuff will go to the back of the Parks and Rec Committee. Uh, no action right now. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Any questions? All right. Very good. Ms. Mathias, Personnel Committee. Uh, we did not have any committee meeting since our last council meeting. But we did finalize, and I think that has been in Ms. Lawrence's staff report too. Um, we did finalize um, for annual performance, and it's in her personal file. And that's it. Fantastic. Any questions, Ms. Wisconsin? Okay. Very good. Police committee, Ms. Hoover. Uh, we did meet last week, that joint meeting with Parks and Rec. Um, we talked about the six officer. The only other um, thing that we discussed was um, some policy changes around uh, police responsibility for um, some of the cases that they're responding to, but that's kind of an ongoing conversation that we'll be having at future meetings as well. Fantastic. Any questions for Ms. Hoover? All right, very good. Any other council comments? Moment. All right. Any unfinished business? Oh. One second, let me just make sure we've got no new business and then new business. All right, is this related to agenda item or? It's the, the, uh, the point is the trash, the chairs, because there are some nonprofits who might recover if they're okay. anyway shaped. If you might just put it in a newsletter and send it to them, they'll get that Thank you for your good suggestion, Ms. Crank. All right, any other questions, comments? Thank you all for making it through the last meeting of the year and uh, 
Happy New Year and a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, Ms. Estes. Second. Second. All right, uh, I got Ms. Matthias. All right. So, all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so moved. We are adjourned. Under. 90 minutes. You need to come and find Thanks for coming. The only person in the building wearing a mask. Listen, I don't want to get the flu. I don't want to get the flu. There you go. I don't want it.